Dear audience, welcome to the show Power Chat. In today's episode, we will be discussing about access to health services in Nepal. Joining us today is Dr. Praveen Mishra, former secretary at the Ministry of Health, Government of Nepal. Please allow me to welcome him. Welcome to the show, Dr. Thank you. Mishra. Thank you very much. How have you been? Yeah, fine. Well, you served with the Government of Nepal at the Ministry of Health for about three decades. And uh, you also served as the secretary for five years during the transitional period at the Ministry of Health. How do you assess the overall health situation of Nepal in terms of access to health services as such? Uh, very pertinent questions that you have put forward and what I would say, though Nepal has remarkably improved in the health sector in the last 20 years and we have been able to achieve the major health indicators. However, regarding the accessibility, you will see still we have the problem for the Mugu, Humla, Jumla and the people living in Kathmandu. So, we need to fill this gap and this, there is a challenge. And I think uh, the way the in the federal context the things are moving forward, it will take some time. But uh, when we analyze the overall health situation, which was 20 years back and at present, I think we are going on the right, right track. We should keep the track and really we need to work hard in order to uh, uh, make the service accessible for the people. What are the key challenges in the health sector? I think the major challenge is still the human resource. Human resource is the major challenge and then we have, uh, uh, we need to really coordinate well with the local governance and the uh, provincial government in the time to come, how best we can make the people service available that to a quality health service. For Dr. Misa, you are referring to the remote districts. Is it true that uh, the health service is very easily or readily available to uh, the public who are living, say, in the capital city or the major cities of the country? Yeah, they definitely in the cities it is available, but not uh, to the grassroots level. Uh, below the district hospital, it is still a challenge. The health posts, sub health posts, primary health centers. There we need to really work hard and see that the, how best we could make the available. Uh, availability of the human resource, availability of the medicines, availability of the equipments and well coordinated all these three things including the informations and the infrastructure. Uh, if we can really uh, work in the, this direction, I think it will not be a big uh, uh, issue or we, it is nothing that we can't achieve. Uh, but still the challenge what we have we have not been able to send the human resource which is designated for that particular uh, place uh, very easily. You are also referring to uh, the governance issue. What are the key challenges associated with the governance so that public were not able to receive the basic uh, health services at the hand? See, um, uh, if you see the uh, uh, governance issue, I think uh, what I proceed personally as a administrator as an administrator in the Ministry of Health. It is uh, high time that we need to demotivate the human resources in the health from their uh, trade union and all those things, because this is the major challenge. Every political parties they have the uh, 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 employees they are uh, lined up with them. And they are there basically to work, not to do the politics for the party. However, that is not the situation. They work less, do more the politics. Most of them. I won't say all, but most of them. Don't so, you think that that is uh, the idea against you know right to associations? It is not the idea, but it is you know when it is a fundamental right and health of the people. The state, the nation has taken this challenge to fulfill the need of the quality health service to the people in that situation. There should be the, the very minimum amount of time that needs to be given 
to the people who are associated with the association for their professional right, not the political right. And then Mm. Most of the time, they should be. It should be available for the people. Well, the Constitution of Nepal also guarantees right to health, and exactly. fundamental rights. Do you think that our initiatives for long to recently set up new provinces, it is in line with what our Constitution, Nepal's Constitution, indicates? This is a very difficult thing. I think the, the question that very pertinent you have put forward, but. It is a challenging thing that uh, through the fundamental right of the constitution and trickling down the health service to the grassroots level, how well we can coordinate, how well we can manage that the people should perceive that the health service given to them is of quality health service. The drug that has been given to them that they are of, uh, easily available without hardship on the pocket. Nobody, if, if someone does not have money, still they, they should be uh, treated with equally care. Now, this is the challenge that how best we could make it reach to the unreached at the grassroots level. So, when I say so, there is a need for at, at present good framework to be developed in order to have a good relation with the federal government, uh, provincial government and the local government. How, how do you feel as a former secretary administrator with the government of Nepal that there are sometimes mostly there are many stories that people were killed, they died simply because they had no access to uh, health services because they were unable to reach out the hospitals and they have lost their lives. Mm -hmm. How do you see this? in terms of Nepal's commitment to international community or United Nations fulfilling the fundamental rights to health. I think uh, this is where we need to work. There is no way out. But for that matter, we need to really see that how best we, c we, we can motivate our human resources, number one. Number two, our policy level things should be made easy in such a way that there is no very much difficult situation where you can you you deal with the problem with the finance eg accessibility availability affordability and uh, e equality as well as equity these things needs to be put forward amalgamated together and move forward and there is a minimum of the uh, uh, health finance that is needed for the people that is needed for the system uh, should be generated also and should be uh, allocated also. And Until that, it is not going to be, it will be in the paper only, it is not going to be translated into reality. Well, uh, Dr. Mister, at the global level, there are many initiatives going around and the recent initiative is that health for all and Nepal has committed time and again through its different national programs and policies so to address its commitment to international community be it Millennium Development Goals or its commitment towards uh, the periodic goals, maybe Sustainable Development Goals. Where are we in terms of fulfilling our commitments? Yes, definitely I think uh, we have uh, been through the Millennium Development Goal. Uh, um, you know, we have reached some level. We need now regarding the maternal mortality. We have reduced the maternal mortality by many fold when it was 850 in 1990, now somewhere it is I think 182 or 183 at present in 2015, we have done an excellent job. Now likewise, the neonatal mortality, under 5 mortality, we have done a lot of things. We have been awarded also, nation has awarded uh, from the UN agencies for all these things. But that is not where we should stop. We should carry on, how best we could reduce it. more in order to have the uh, in the, uh, by 2030 now the goal is of 2030 where we should see that uh, we should the maternal mortality rate should not be more than 15 or 17 uh, likewise the uh, infant mortality and the uh, neonatal mortality there where the challenge is we should number one we should preserve what we have achieved and further accelerate or scale up our effort in order to achieve some more. There where we need to uh, utilize our experience, our uh, innovative financing mechanism, mechanism 
that we had practiced innovative finance mechanism and all these things should be the experience, the finance, the policy needs to be uh, br uh, brought together in order to fulfill the commitment for the people and to the international community as well. Often there is uh, criticism about the governance or the uh, service delivery system, uh, not only in health but overall governance system of Nepal and uh, mostly the bureaucrats or the administrators are criticized for you know creating hypes towards an initiative and but not reaching out to the needy people mm. and there were many as you were referring mm. to some cases how Nepal has done excellent job in terms and awarded by the international community w where are we in terms of fulfilling the public's need public's need being treated affordable price and being access to the all health uh, service delivery system. You know, when you, I, I, in the init in, in, uh, initially when I started, I told we are much better than what we were 20 years back at present when you see. But are we happy with this? No, we need to do more. And when we need to do more, until we reach the final goal that I told, the indicators that had been laid down for 2030, where we will be having the neonatal mortality or the uh, under 5 mortality less than 10, 7, 8 somewhere. Maternal mortality will be somewhere 20, 25. We need to now work for that. And for that matter, you, we need commitment, dedication and honesty without much of the political interference. Because, you know, today the governance is of X party. The bureau, the employees related to that party I feel they are more in the politics rather than their own job. How difficult was uh, your job? It was much very difficult. The Ministry of uh, Health. As an it, was, it was uh, very difficult. However, diplomatically, you know, the health diplomacy, when sometimes we need to talk about, we need to talk about the health diplomacy, I had to be diplomat, diplomatically uh, managing my show over there. And it was, uh, though I am not bro uh, initial career as an uh, administrator, I was an academician, I was a clinician, then I became the bureaucrat or that as, a, an, uh, as an administrator I came. But uh, uh, it was difficult, but I could manage it. Well, often it is said that there is lack of human resources, also capital. Mm. Finance. W w finance. Is that true in terms yes. of Nepal? How you know, I remember uh, when there are so many universities producing with the you know uh, experts and um, specialists and doctors, medical professionals. You know, um, the WHO for delivering the quality health care service to the people, the minimum need of the human resource is 23 per 10,000 population. We are at present 6.8 including doctors and nursing, para, paramedics, all. I think one third, more than one third, uh, one fourth. So quality health service, it is not only the uh, giving the money, it is not supplying the drugs, it is also caring the people when they are in need, reaching to the unreached when they are in need. So that cannot be done with the help of this small amount of human resources. We need to increase the number of the human resources because if you see the shifting paradigm of the disease, it was a, once upon a time there was more than six, uh, 60 percent uh, prevalence of the communicable disease. Um, hundreds and thousands of people used to die. Why? Because of cholera, because of epidemics. Now no more is the situation. Paradigm has shifted. We have some infectious disease, but the paradigm has shifted towards non-communicable disease. And non-communicable disease is very difficult in order to manage it with the human resource and the finance because you need a lot of money, lot of very high service specialty, a specialist and all. So we need to work at the preventive level like cardiovascular disease, blood pressure, uh, diabetes, your uh, COPD, lungs disease and cancer. These are the four major non-communicable disease which ask for a big amount of money and big amount of specialized human resources which is not possible in a government in a, in a situation like Nepal. But where we can put our nose in the preventive work. We can prevent this disease very easily. We can promote the people of the health through the knowledge and behavior. So we need to move in that side more towards the preventive and promotive health. 
Well, how do you see the future of health service delivery system at the province and local level? It is it is challenge at present for the government to really uh, develop uh, or architect a very good structural framework where there should be a really functioning unit at the grassroots level. If the grassroots level is strengthened well within the Ministry of Health, I think there should not be any much, much of a problem. Because if you see, majority of the disease, the people report to the health post, sub-health post or primary health center, they all are related to their community itself, like unsafe drinking water, uh, hygiene, sanitation, pollution and malnutrition. So this is a multi-sectoral, what I used when I was, was secretary, what I used to say, these are the issue beyond health, beyond health issue, means these, all those factors, these factors can contribute making the people ill. So the impact, this is not under the Ministry of Health, what I said, but the impact is on the Ministry of Health, where you have to treat. What sort of uh, structure would work in your so, opinion? So it should be like community based, as, as we uh, discussed earlier, human resources in that, what we said, we should have an integrated approach, well coordinated approach at the grassroots level. When we are talking about the preventive health, there should be the sanitation, there should be safe drinking water as well linked together, pollution, malnutrition things can, how best it can be looked on. So these factors, if multi-sectoral factors, though it is a social, it is not a health issue only, it is a social issue. So it, it can be looked on, then very well, very well we can manage the disease pattern, which is very less at the grassroots level, which is out of all these four, five factors I have said. Nearly 50, more than 50, 60 percent of the problem because of these four, five unsafe drinking water, uh, your uh, 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 sanitation, hygiene, uh, pollution and malnutrition. So we should uh, uh, control this, then the curable disease, then we, we are, I think, even with the limited amount of human resources, we can really manage it. It is not much of big, big human cry then. When it is coming to the implementation of federal setup in other areas as well, it is often said that uh, the provinces uh, will be unable to manage resources. Is it so in the no. case of health uh, service? No, delivery? I don't believe it because Nepal what has achieved till now, the Millennium Development Goals, four, five, six, whatever, is because of due to the grassroots hard work. The health workers, they worked very hard at the grassroots level. Yes, definitely the direction was the policy level uh, and the strategy were given from him uh, here at the center, but they were the people who worked very hard. Do you know Ama Samu, Mother's Group and all, at every ward level they are. And uh, the volunteers, female volunteers, they worked very hard. So it, I don't believe on it, it cannot be managed. It can be very well managed and it is being very well managed at present and it can be much more well managed in the time to come. Only thing, the visionary leadership should be there. At a time when uh, it is also said that there would be no public health offices at the district's level, what sort of structure would work best in your suggestion? No, I, uh, maybe district uh, uh, public health office name will not be there, so with the, some other name it will be. But it is mandatory to have because the without the public health, you know, day to day our life is uh, uh, people's uh, common thing when we talk about it is the, is, is the public background, is the health which is uh, at present we are uh, uh, looking forward is a public health. Everybody, every person and the communities should be healthy. It is a national asset healthy person, you know, I believe personally, when the qualification is there, uh, more money for health and more health for money. You allocate more money for health, then you have more money coming in when you are healthy. And the national productivity increased by three times when, once a person is healthy in relation to the unhealthy person, in comparison to the unhealthy person. So even the national development is linked directly to the healthy people. If the people are not healthy, the, uh, the contribution for the national development they can't make, equally where there is a healthy people. So the contribution, financial contribution and all contribution should be 
uh, for the uh, making the people healthy and I think once the people are healthy, national development has to be there. There is no any uh, uh, other way that we can move, say that no we, nation cannot move How forward. would province level uh, ministries uh, work along with the health ministry at the central level because there is no specific ministry that would look after uh, the health issues? I think ministry of health should uh, manage it uh, in the way that the national programs, the major burden of diseases which is uh, having uh, the policy development, implementation, strategy development and its monitoring and evaluation part. This thing, uh, monitoring and evaluation of the implementation, however the implementation is supposed to be left with the provincial government. But national program has to be conducted from here, like say uh, vaccination program, because you have to buy the vaccination from the uh, international communities and which vaccine to be given which vaccine to be. However, the recommendation for may not be in all province the same vaccine. No, maybe some vaccine is needed in only one province or two province, not all the province. On the recommendation of their provincial recommendation, the center should decide, make the policy and they should implement it. Monitor, monitoring and evaluation has to be done, really very hard monitoring and evaluation from the center. So, likewise, there are some policy that needs to be de decided by the province and some policy that left, left left to be decided by the local governance. So, and all the things needs to be monitored at each level with equal emphasis and see the result output. Uh, well, Dr. Misra, how do you assess the awareness level of the public as such demanding or having access to the health services delivery system? Yes. Uh, Are they aware enough? Yes, uh, I think um, with the due course of time, the awareness has definitely improved, but not to the 100 percent. I think uh, still we need to work and at, at least I, I, what I perceive uh, uh, at present, uh, uh, the study that was done I think in 2012 uh, or 13, people, 70 percent, 75 percent people, they still like the government institution and they will prefer to go to the government institution because they know about it, because they have faith on the government institutions and government system delivery, because uh, the government is committed to deliver the service to them. Only thing what we are lacking at present, I think, is the good referral system and um, the private uh, um, sector not going to the periphery, they all are uh, accumulated here in the capital city. Well, only. Dr. Misra, there are so many interesting issues, but we are coming to the end of the show. Do you have any final thoughts improving the overall health delivery system of Nepal very I quickly? Yeah, I think uh, we need to universally reach to the people. The people, say, from uh, in Kathmandu or the people in Jumla or people in Mohattari, they should be, ha they should have a good access to the service, they should uh, uh, be, uh, uh, service should be affordable to them and uh, they should perceive the service that they have and they should be benefited and they should feel that the quality health service has been given to them. So, universality means it is for everyone, even who has the money or who does not have the money uh, in the health sector, once it is the fundamental right in the constitution, we cannot uh, move away from that and finally, everyone needs to be brought in board regarding the quality health service and perception. Well, Dr. Misra, uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Dear audience, time now to wrap up the show. Keep watching us. See you next week. Namaste.